Hi everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. Join me today to tangle some flowers and colour them with watercolour pencils and then we'll create a bold and dramatic background using tangles. Today I'll be using a 3.5 inch tile, an O1 pen and some sort of a thicker pen for colouring, a gold gel pen a pencil and tortillon and it's always handy to have a white gel pen in. I'll also be using some watercolour pencils. I'm using Faber-Castell Albert Dürer pencils but you could use any kind and I've got a selection of reds and greens. I'll also be using a water brush. I'm going to start my tile doing four dots and a border. And then for the string, I'll be creating some wavy lines. And these will be where I'll put the tangles in the background. Some of them can overlap if you like. Now the first tangle is called Fairy Tale by Irina Sedova. And if you want the step out for this, it's on patterncollections.com. I will actually put a link to this underneath the video because I think I might have messed up the top part a little bit. You could use any flower pattern that you like. And because patterncollections.com has a whole category of flowers, there's lots of flowers you can choose from. So I'll add the stems in now. And I'm adding extra stems because this next tangle is called Bud Head and it's by Leaf Yeah. I apologise if I've pronounced that incorrectly. If you're adding any colour to your work, always erase the lines where the colour's going to go because the colour will set the graphite and you'll see it. I saw this little ladybug on a Facebook post the other day so I had to try it out. It's a little vacuum cleaner so I'll give you a bit of a listen. It's fantastic for those little bits of broken off colour you get when you're colouring in. Very cute. I'm just going to touch up those lines that I did for the string at the beginning just so that I can see where I'm going a little bit better. In this bottom section I'm going to be drawing Knight's Bridge and you have to be really careful when there's lots of lines that you're sort of manoeuvring around. If you get off track with Knightsbridge, you can easily go wrong. And that's why I've got a white gel pen on hand, because usually I do go wrong somewhere. When there's lots of colouring, this is when I switch to a thicker pen. If you've got a Micron PN, they're pretty good for this as well. I've decided I'm going to add a little bit of weight to the underside of these print omps and I'll also colour in the background. I'm 
I'm not very happy with the Knight's Bridge at the bottom, so I'm going to fix it up a little bit with a white gel pen. When the whole piece is finished, you won't notice this. I'm just adding a few orbs to this section. It's a little bit like an overgrown tipple. Before I finish colouring that background, I forgot to do the centres of the flowers. So just a couple of mocha and maybe a couple of orbs, then colour the rest in. For the very top section, I'm going to do Sand Swirl by Carrie Hewan. To colour the flowers, I'm going to start by putting a nice base coat with this colour called Madder. I'm using a medium pressure so that I get a nice even surface. When it comes to colouring the buds, I'm going to decide where the light source is coming from. And so I'm looking at that top right hand corner. I'm going to leave a white strip where the light is hitting the bud. So colour everywhere except for that white strip. Now I'm using this second colour. It's called Deep Scarlet Red. When I use this colour, I'm not going to cover the entire petal. You can see I'm concentrating more down at the tips. I'm using a slightly harder pressure than I did for the base coat, but I'm still not pressing too hard. If you find that you go over the lines, this is a great little eraser made by Tombow. It's a mono zero 
eraser and can just clean things up very quickly. To add some shadows, I'm using the colour Red Violet. For the stems I'm using a light green and a dark green, earth green yellowish and chromium green opaque. So I'm starting with that light green, earth green yellowish at the bottom of the stems and putting the darker green right up the top so it creates a bit of a shadow underneath the flower. I'm using a fine tipped water brush and I'm activating the colour right from the lightest up to the darkest colour. Make sure you clean your brush well when you change colours. Squeeze a bit of water onto a tissue or a cloth and clean it that way. Again, I'm starting in that lighter section and working my way out to the darker. And then I'm coming back to the top from that lighter section into the darker up near the base of the actual flower. When it comes to those buds, make sure your paintbrush is really clean so that you don't get colour into that white strip. I need to let those flowers dry before I do anything else to them. So I'm going to work on the background and do some shading. Don't put any shading on any part of the flowers because we'll do that with the colours. I'm putting just a little bit of a shadow where each of those hills seem to go. And in the sand swirl, I'm shading where the pattern overlaps. Now remember where we said our light source was coming from. So we'll put a shadow on the other side of the flowers from the light source. And it'll look more effective if we only do that one side. Softly blend all that graphite with your tortillon.
Now that my flowers are dry, I'm going to add another layer using a deep scarlet red. Because I'm getting more pigment on my flowers, I'm finding that I'm pressing a little bit harder with this layer. I want a really saturated colour so that these flowers stand out from the background. By gradually building up the colours on these flowers, we're creating a bit more depth than if we used one flat colour. Make sure that between each layer you let everything dry out. I tried this pattern out the other day and came up with a more orangey looking flower and I quite like that but I can't remember what the colour was so I think I want to these are looking a little bit pink tinged so you can see how that looks orange and so I'm going to add this pale geranium lake and this time because I've got so much colour on the flowers I'm pressing harder but I won't need to activate this with any water I can just blend it in as if it was a coloured pencil and that's the beauty of watercolour pencils you can use them for a watercolour effect or you can take advantage of the pencil characteristics it's a lot quicker to build up layers with watercolour pencils than it is with actual coloured pencils. I'll use my red violet again to build up those shadows the other advantage of watercolor pencils is you don't have so much of a grainy effect like you can have with colored pencils by using that water it evens out the pigment if you use colored pencils you've got to really work hard at gradually working up those layers to get a nice even effect I'm using my thicker pen now to do a nice bold outline it's all bold so I want it to stand out against the background and once I've got the whole flower outlined I'm going to add some little marks down into each petal I want to retain that white area as much as I can on the buds so I'm not going over the lines where that white section is To finish off, I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle with the gold gel pen. So I'm going to go into those centers. Oh, this is running out really quite fast. So I might have to go back in when it dries and uh, touch them up with the black. So I'm just putting a few dots around the edge of the petals. There's not much room to add my initials so I'm going to work on this area down here and where I go into the black I'm going to go over my initials with the white gel pen and if you look closely there you can't tell where I touched it up with the white gel pen earlier I'm now going to thicken that outside line a little bit it's nice to have a contrast between thick lines and thinner lines 
I also at the end go back in and and really look closely at any bits I've missed I think just taking the time to go over your work and fill any little white gaps makes a real difference to the overall look of your piece of art so there we have it I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. And if you'd like to share your work in my Facebook group, there's a link below this video. Thank you for watching and until next week, stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel, or there are a couple of links here on the screen. and. There's the subscribe button.